Hello. My name's Heather. I live in California, and I work at Diablo Canyon Nuclear Power Plant. My friend Kristen and I started Mothers for Nuclear three years ago. We are mothers first, environmentalists, and also nuclear professionals. That's me in the control room at Diablo Canyon. I was a reactor operator. And Kristen is about to rappel down the containment dome to do some concrete inspections. Kristen and I were both raised with strong environmental values. We love being outdoors and want to preserve nature for the future, for our future generations, and make sure we have enough resources to continue to live prosperous lives on this planet. We were both skeptical about nuclear energy, and after starting work at Diablo Canyon, we asked many questions for many years before we got comfortable and also realized that nuclear does support our environmental values. That's my daughter on the right. <laughs> so we realized that nuclear is a good option for so many reasons. Cost, it's low carbon, low particulate emissions. It has a very small land footprint. It's very reliable. It conserves our natural resources because it's such a dense energy source. Technology leadership, positive economic impact, speed of deployment, energy independence, these are all great things that nuclear has to offer. So I was pretty surprised when I heard that my company was going to shut down Diablo Canyon power plant. Yes, that is a real whale. <laughs> Isn't it beautiful? So why is my company doing this in the States? It doesn't seem to make sense. Kristen and I both realized that we had to speak up more. It took us years ourselves to recognize the value of nuclear and most other people in the public don't have that opportunity to work in nuclear. They don't have the time to ask all of the questions. We don't have time to wait for people to come to these conclusions on their own. And it's up to all of us in the industry to speak out and let other people know why nuclear is important. So this is why we started Mothers for Nuclear. Why do we care about nuclear? It's clean, reliable electricity, and providing this is both an environmental and a humanitarian mission. Climate change and air pollution both have enormous cost to society, and over a billion people worldwide do not even have access to electricity. Why don't people value nuclear then? What's going on? We don't talk about it enough. We need economists. We need people to talk about the value that nuclear provides. We need marketing. We need people, diverse audiences, and speakers to get together and discuss nuclear. We have been over-relying on our industry communicators and technical professionals to communicate the value of nuclear when really we need everyone. We need mothers and women and people that are trusted in the community. Our science communications have generally been presented in ways that scare people because no scientist will ever say there's no risk. Also in the States, we have a lot of anti-nuclear protests, media, social groups talking about nuclear in scary ways, movies, TV shows. The Pandora is a South Korean film 
that's very scary about nuclear. I watched it. And our industry itself sometimes puts out messages that are a little scary. Take a look at that eye, the radiation symbol in it, and also the scary green glow. We need to stop doing this. <laughs> For many years, we've been silent, trying to avoid attention, just keep silent, keep doing our jobs. When our companies do communicate, they try and calm public fear by talking about how safe nuclear is. They talk about security features, accident protection, warning systems, and instead of reassuring the public, it makes them feel more scared. There must be something really dangerous in there if we have to do that much to protect it. The caring and diverse group of people who support nuclear are not at the front of these communications. We're often hidden behind corporate messages. So what are we gonna do about it? We need to get diverse groups of people talking about nuclear, about the value of nuclear. These are all mothers for nuclear from mostly around the United States, a couple from Japan, Switzerland, and we're looking to establish chapters worldwide. We'll be working on one for Turkey soon. And how do we communicate differently about nuclear? First, establish shared values with your audience. Don't lead with how, how the plant works or what is radiation. It's all right to acknowledge their fears. Nuclear does sound scary. That's OK. Then, move from fear to rational decisions. Nuclear provides hope for action on climate, clean air, land conservation, energy poverty. We need to talk about the value of nuclear and the benefits that it provides to everyone. What are some of those benefits? You all know those as well as I do. Low carbon, low air pollution. We need to share this with the public. They need to see this information. We also can be confident of statements like the following. Nuclear is already the safest way of generating electricity, period. We can tell our family and friends the real risk of nuclear is not using it. So as I mentioned, what's working in California and in some other places that we visited, get diverse people and diverse groups talking about the value of nuclear. That's me with my daughter Zoe speaking to our local school board who benefits from a lot of tax dollars from Diablo Canyon. We are building public support in a number of ways. We created a billboard sign in downtown San Francisco for lots of people to see on the freeway. We are active on social media and write articles in papers and online. We regularly speak on the radio. That's a picture of Kristen and I on our very first radio show. We also go out to schools and do political outreach with government organizations. Thank you. Again, I'm Heather, and I will hang around for questions. And there is one more picture of beautiful Diablo Canyon. Does anyone have any questions about Mothers for Nuclear? Go ahead. I think we have a mic runner. Hold on just one second. Uh, oh, 
another one. Okay, uh, I will ask it in English if it's okay with you. All right. Uh, so, as the mothers of nuclear, you and your friend started initiated an uh, organization uh, to give uh, information to public. That's very, very brilliant, and you are a nuclear uh, professional, so you are in and out of the nuclear power plant. The question is that you are highlighting that uh, the nuclear is low carbon emission technology, and it is very important for uh, the world and also for California. So why the Diablo Canyon is uh, getting shut off? Uh, maybe it is important to highlight that, the reason of it, and also as a woman, as a mother, and you have a beautiful daughter. Uh, and would you let her be in a nuclear power plant, work at a nuclear power plant? Would you support such a, a professional decision for her? Thank you. So the question is, why is Two questions, Diablo Canyon though. shutting down? Mm -hmm. And also, what was the second part about? Would you let Zoe uh, work at the nuclear power plant? Would, would you let support? Let daughter yeah, but at least support. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So in California. Um, as I mentioned before, there's a lot of misperception and media about nuclear that's negative. And there are a lot of environmental groups that don't support nuclear because they have misperceptions. And California has created legislation that makes it not favorable to keep running nuclear plants. Part of it is political, part of it is public opinion, part of it is marketing, um, economics. There are some false market structures in California that are designed to promote renewable energy sources, and those do not value the low carbon nature of nuclear, so nuclear gets pushed out. And Zoe, my daughter, she is very excited about nuclear energy, and She's visited the plant a number of times with me on tours, and I would be happy to have her work in any aspect of nuclear. <laughs> Anyone else? Other questions? Jamil Kesaman from Karchal, Kardemir. Uh, first of all, I want to thank you for a beautiful uh, presentation, yeah. and you have an adorable daughter. Uh, in Turkey, we have a saying that it means, uh, may God protect her. <laughs> uh, so, uh, actually, uh, I believe in nuclear energy. But uh, I have friends, and uh, they are hesitating about nuclear energy. So, uh, I will be a devil, devil's rover in here. Uh, you know, uh, there is uh, risks in nuclear. Uh, there is also benefits like environmental, industrial, it's okay. But uh, people learn the hard way to uh, protect, the, protect their uh, nuclear plants. So uh, would, you like, would you like to take that risk for uh, environment and uh, industry? Because uh, if it blows up, it will cost uh, a lot of lives, like uh, Fukushima and uh, Chernobyl. And uh, our people affected from Chernobyl, as you know. So we are really hesitating it. Uh, I'd like to hear uh, your opinion about this matter. Thank you. Yeah. So as I mentioned before, it's OK to be scared of nuclear. And there are a lot of things that happen that sound really scary. I was in the control room at Diablo Canyon when the Fukushima events were happening. I saw the explosions on the TV back in our brief room. And that was my worst nightmare. I was scared to death. But when we got more information about what was actually happening at the plant, we learned that no one was hurt from anything nuclear related. A lot of people died in the tsunami, and the media conflated those two things. We also chose to evacuate a large number of people, and 1,500 people died in that process. Um, largely due to panic and fear. And so I realized that the most dangerous thing about nuclear is our fear itself. And we need to talk about it in different ways. It's 
you know, maybe expensive for the company to clean up, but it's not nearly the risk that we have made it out to be. We in the industry and we in the public. Does that answer it? <laughs> Anyone else? Yeah. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. I'm Bahira Gül Göktepe. Hello, Heather. Welcome Hi. to Turkey. Thank you. Uh, I'm quite impressed with your talk. And I would like to ask you some question, and I'd like to get your advice for us. I'm representing for women in nuclear Turkey. For those who don't know this, nuclear alanda kadınlar. Biz de Türkiye'de benzer bir kuruluşun üyeleriyiz. Pek çok değerli hanımefendi burada. Şule Hanım da üyemiz. So what we are doing, we have been on the same line with you, working, trying to tell people what is nuclear energy, what are the benefits for the world and for Turkey. It's very important. But, well, working in this field and communicating with public in a country like Turkey is quite different than what you are doing. In Turkey, for many years, we wanted to have a nuclear power plant, but we didn't. Now it's under construction. So it is easy if you tell people the, these benefits of nuclear power plants, if you have the nuclear power plants operating like you do mm. in USA. So you have a very good proof. But in Turkey, we don't have operating power, or power plants, but we had the risks. And people were quite concerned with the risk from Chernobyl, Fukushima. So we are in very difficult state with the communication. Yes. I like to uh, have your idea what we should do on this line. Another point, uh, most of us in the women in nuclear Turkey, more than 170 wonderful women working in governments, universities, research centers, and we are not allowed to speak with public freely. So I wonder, you are still working at the plant, are you? Yes. So how you can go around and communicate with people so you get, uh, you know, permission from your authority, yes? So when I first started... So Mother's you are appreciated for this. Very good. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. Okay, um, another question. Oh. To communicate with public and communication, publication, you need some funds. Where do you get the funds to do all these, you know, successful activities? Because... If we do this, if we get a fund from the, uh, some industry, so we lose our independence. Mm -hmm. So we can only talk purely as volunteers to be more trusted. What do you, uh, what's your idea on this line? Okay, so I heard Thank you, and we will questions. communicate later. <laughs> um, thank you. Yes, I do still work at Diablo Canyon, and when I first started Mothers for Nuclear, I was worried that I might lose my job because I'm speaking against my company. They want to shut down the plant. I want to keep it open. But they have been very tolerant of me. <laughs> I'm allowed to express my own personal opinion as long as I make it clear that I am not speaking for my company. I'm a, a concerned citizen, and I have that right the same as any other member of the public. So as long as I stay separate, by the way, I'm not speaking for Pacific Gas and Electric Company today. I am speaking for Mothers for Nuclear. <laughs> as long as I keep those two things separate, they're okay with it. As far as funding, we do not take money from the industry and we do not have very much money. <laughs> um, we mostly have small donors that contribute to us for through our website and um, believe in our mis mission. So, and we also don't spend a lot of money. We mostly do online communications and writing and you know, a small amount of travel. Anyone else? Hi, well, thank you very much for having me. I'm so excited to be here with you all, and hopefully I'll bump into you the next couple days. Thanks.